Hey, listen, we're back on the uh, another episode of the Players Circle, man, where we're out talking to former players, guys that have been through the program or guys that have had the opportunity to coach, man, and give you an educational piece on what it's like to, to play the college game, man, some now in the pros. And we got a special guest, man, one of the guys I had the opportunity to coach at the Dream Bowl. Uh, man, I was on his butt the whole week, man. <laughs> this kid had every ability. I had all the ability in the world, had the perfect size, all that. And it's, and like like we just talked about before, it's, it's – it's coming in perfect timing, man, for his opportunity to get to uh, the big leagues, man. I want to introduce Keon Clary, man, uh, 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 a good guy, good kid, man, uh, with a lot of experience um, to the show. And make sure you guys listen up. You guys are ready to go because he's going to drop a lot of gems on you, man. Introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know who you are, where you're from, if you're crazy, if you're not crazy, all that good uh, stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Coach Pugh? I'm Keon Clary. Um, I currently play for the Southwest Kansas Storm in the AFL. Um, from West Columbia, South Carolina, I played uh, college at Texas A&M Kingsville. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. So I know you, you've had like an extensive journey, uh, journey man. And, yes. you know, uh, going back from like you starting in the JUCO, man, ending up at, at Kingsville. What was your journey like? So let's take it back to the high school, man. You know, you're in high school, you're doing your thing. Um, you know, you had the recruiting process that was going on. How did your recruitment go? How did you lead to the JUCO? How did that go? Um, with my recruitment, um, I feel like one thing I needed to do better was really just put myself out there. I didn't really, ah, I didn't have any stars. The number one answer I get, dog. Let's get into it, man. Get into it. Let's go. I didn't really have no star. I wasn't a kid, a five star kid. I wasn't, uh, yeah. uh, I didn't have a whole lot of offers. I didn't have any offer. Hutchinson, Kansas was my actually only offer coming mm -hmm. out of high school. But, um, I think where my downfall coming out of high school was I just didn't put myself out there, man. Like, I didn't go any camps. Like, I wasn't on social media. I wasn't emailing coaches. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't talking to coaches. I had no clue, like, how big this, this spectrum really got and how much marketing yourself really matters. Yeah. So uh, that's one thing I really wish I would have did better or, or had the knowledge to know, like, like you need to be at these camps. You need to put yourself in front of these coaches, like, here, here, here. Like, you, you got to do these things. So they, I mean, they can see you. If they don't know who you are, they can't, they won't ever find right. you. Right. So, and, like, um, man, when you, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no. I mean, uh, once I got my senior year, uh, I was in. I was fortunate enough to be in the uh, North South Bowl game, which is basically they yeah. take like the, the top forty four players out the North, top forty four player out the South Bowl game, yeah. type thing. Right. Get there at the time I'm playing receiver, so uh, I played receiver my whole life. In high school, I was a big receiver guy, guru, ladder drills, everything. Like, I thought foot, yeah. footwork, yeah. I was all receiver, no DB, no type of secondary work. So uh, I get to the 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 North South game and uh, I do my thing. I, I got coaches telling me like, "Yeah, I, I think you're a good player. You play at the next level, type thing." And uh, I balled out. I think I had the only touchdown in the game. And after the game, uh, Hutchinson Kansas comes up to me and they're like, "Yeah, we really like you." But at the time, I don't know anything about Hutchinson Kansas. I don't know anything <laughs> right. about Kansas at all. I don't yep, even really know yep. much about JUCO. I know last yeah. chance you and uh, and that's about it. Right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, after after the season ended. I kind of just I played basketball course, ran track, things like that. But yeah. uh, nothing really popped off for me. So I committed to Hutchinson, Kansas um, and kind of bet on myself in that avenue. And I love it, man. So I, I bet, oh, we're going to get into it. All right. So, you know, you talked about being overlooked, man. And I've had so many guys come through my program that, that I tell them, like, man, this is a business now with, with social media and all that. The way you can reach out to coaches yeah. now, like, bro, there ain't no excuse, man. Now, if you're going to be recruited, you're going to be recruited. That's a whole nother uh, thing. But when you talk about, like, the overlook aspect, let's get into, like, you playing. All right, man, you got the size, you got the link that everybody looks for, all that good stuff, right? Uh, when you when you look back on it and you compare yourself to the higher-rated guys in the Carolinas, I know a little bit about the Carolinas playing for the Panthers, man, so I know kind of the area that you're in, right? Um, and you're comparing yourself to those guys and you're matching up stats, you're matching up film, you're matching up all those things. It's like, man – if you had one thing that you just go back and do, whether that's the social media aspect, whether that's you personally reaching out to the coaches, not relying on your high school coach, what would be that thing, man, where you, where you would tell a guy in your same situation, a kid that just don't know any better, what would you tell them coming out of high school when it comes to that aspect of being seen, getting the exposure? Man, don't hesitate, man. Just don't, don't, and really yeah. believe in yourself. I think that's, I love the thing that I, that I, struggled with in high school growing up a little bit like mm. just, just believing in yourself man like don't don't yeah. think you're not good enough to be at some camp or don't think uh, uh mom's gonna say no 
because it's a hundred dollars like ask man like like you yeah. will never know until you ask so uh that oh, would be that's my, good, man. my best my best advice just just really put yourself out there and ask man and and and, and try don't i think i didn't try enough like i needed to ah. try like, it would be a camp 175 bucks man my grandma not paying for that never yeah. even asked you know yeah. and, and you never know if i asked i might have got it would have been into camp and it could have could have helped me out Boy, that's good, man. There's so many ways I could take this. But if I got to take it another way. All right, so you said something, man. You said that you played receiver. And, uh, you know, I do a, I do another podcast with uh, college coaches, man. So I, I talk to a lot of college coaches. I'm talking about they love guys who play multiple positions. And one of the biggest things that I get uh, in my program, man, are guys that are telling me, you know, I play this. I play quarterback. I play receiver. I play whatever, right? All right, so you, you're a receiver in high school. All of a sudden, man, you're a pro football player at DB. What – what uh made you switch to DB? Was it just an open opportunity? Was it getting on the field now? Were you stuck in the mindset of playing right receiver? If you were to go back and you were to talk to yourself, go back a few years and say, look, bro, play everything. What would you do, man? How, how important is it playing multiple positions? I think it's really important to play multiple positions because I think it just shows versatility, man. Like if you yeah. if you're a DB that can catch the ball, if you're a receiver with with quickness, with with good hips, man, like I just think when you get to college, it's it's so many different things. Like you could, I know a guy, I know a kid. Uh, his name is Timothy Jameson. I'm with the high school with him. There was a running back in high school, yeah. running back in high school, running back yeah. in middle school. Like this big bulky guy gets to college, puts on thirty pounds at the end. You know, yeah. so I feel like <laughs> I'm not necessarily not for my experience. I didn't right. have to go for running the ball at the end, but. Just being able to be versatile in that aspect of being able to do a lot of things, I think being able to play a lot of positions um, helps translate to that. Man, that, that's good, man. So, so you you went through the the North South game, man. You ended up going to the JUCO route. What was JUCO like, man? Was it eye opening experience? Was it like, man, this is a wake up call? Like, man, I got to get the <laughs> hell up out of here, bro. What what was that like, man, at the JUCO uh, level? JUCO, man. JUCO is a <laughs> Juco's experience, you're never going to forget. I don't care where you go to Juco at. Yeah. It's going to stick with you, man. And and, yeah, yeah. and I really think it, it made me a, a lot of who I am today. I think okay. uh, where I went, Hutchinson, Kansas, great Juco, man. Middle of nowhere, but if, you, if you're if going there for football, you're going to get better at football. Yeah, yeah, okay. So gotcha. Um, gotcha. for me, personally, when I first get there, I'm the youngest guy. I'm 17 years old. I get to Juco at 17, just walk the stage. Two weeks after I graduated college, I mean high school, boom, I'm there, middle of Hutchinson, Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I get there. I got uh my coach, Coach Brown was my receiver coach. Shout out Coach Brown. Coach Brown is <laughs> Coach Brown gonna go gonna try to push your buttons, put it that way. Coach Brown gonna yeah. go yeah. he knows we gotta get how to get the most out of you. So uh yeah. I got to get with Coach Brown. And then when I get there, my freshman year, I registered. So uh, I'm having a hard time in high school. I mean, plays is, is you get a you get a card. Maybe you don't get a card. I don't know how they do it yep. nowadays. But when I was in high yep. school, we had to go wristband, you know, mm -hmm. go ball. Like it, there's nothing to it, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, <laughs> you can read. You can play. You get to college, they got signals. They got this. You got that. So I'm having a hard time trying to learn this stuff. In JUCO, you got about a short time frame because they really want to get you in. In JUCO, they want to get you in in June. Yeah, get to win early, get all the freshmen involved because it's not like a four year. You don't really have vets. You don't really right. have guys that have been right. doing this three, two, three, four years. You got freshmen and sophomores basically for the right. most part. You got some transfers, but it's a two year school, so everybody's really learning system for the first time. Honestly, I yeah, mean, you play football, but the cut like whatever they uh they want to run their scheme and stuff. You are kind of learning that stuff for the first time. And me as a kid out of high school, never seen signal, I never seen none of that stuff. Right. <laughs> so it took me a little minute to to figure out uh just just catching on with the playbook and and signals everything. So I redshirted my uh freshman year, and then coming out of my redshirt uh freshman year, coming into the uh, summer, I was doing good. I started putting on a little bit of weight. I was thinking I was coming into my time, being ready to play at the college level, and then uh coming into my sophomore year, um. I think we get to the, about the fourth. I think it was about week four. Yeah, it was like week four, week five. I tear my PCL. Boom, season over. So wow. now I've been out here for about a year and a half. I got about – I played in about three games. <laughs> I got a torn right, PCL. Yeah. Uh, this, my season is over. We go into the spring. I'm, I'm fixing up with my PCL. I'm, I'm getting everything right. COVID hits. 
Mm-hmm. So now we're in a whole nother <laughs> extension, and I'm yeah. like, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, man. So COVID hits, they send everybody home for that spring. So I kind of like, what's the word? I'm not self-healed. I, I mean, of course, I was working out with the knee, but like I wasn't really in a right. training room in a facility. I was at home during COVID. Right. But, yeah. but yeah. I was hurt, not fortunately, but I mean, it was a perfect time to heal. It was there and then because it wasn't really right. Yeah. And so yeah, the time, during that yeah. time, I was mm-hmm. kind of healing up. We get back in the fall. Everybody's thinking, uh, we're gonna have a season, you know. And after COVID, everybody was thinking we're gonna try to have a season. Da 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 da. Don't have no season. So that whole fall, for me, fortunately, it worked out because after that fall, I came to the conclusion. I don't want to put this a six three, and and I don't want to discourage anybody out there, but a six three receiver, that's saying something. But in this day and age, that's not saying a whole lot. Like, what do you do? Yeah. We've seen six three receivers, you know. What right, I mean? like that's yes. not too special. Yeah. But in the in the time, I'm like, man, like a six three corner. That's yeah. speaking a little volume. Yeah. And and at the time, I thought it was it's way easier said than done. Like, yeah, I'm just gonna go yeah. and then lock them up and 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 go big time. <laughs> man, wasn't the case. Uh-huh. So I'm coming off of a, a pretty much a year recovery of a, of a torn PCL. Haven't played football in about a whole year because COVID kind of wiped everything out. And I'm having a position change. Yeah. So after COVID, after that fall, we come back in the spring, I'm playing defensive back. I, think I talk to the coaches, everything. They're like, if there's one guy we think, you know, could do make that change and be, you know, good at it, it would be you. So they let me make the change. All the coaches was on board with it. I come into the spring uh, training or spring camp as a as a cornerback. Yeah. Man. Boy, was I humbled in spring. Uh, it's the same guy that, where I'm like, man, I run a better <laughs> curl route. I, I catch better than them. I'm getting toasted every day. I'm talking about yeah. silver bags day, man. And and that cornerback, I think for a minute, it really messed up my confidence because I'm like, man, do I suck? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> am I bad? Like, is, is this yeah. for me? Like, I'm starting to contemplate, like, should I even be at cornerback? Like, did I, was I supposed to? Like, I'm talking to God about, I'm talking to my grandparents, I'm talking to everybody, like, I don't know if this is for me, man, because I'm not used to just being on the, the losing spectrum so much. I'm I'm used to winning. Right. So at right. receiver, shoot, you can you catch one ball, you're hot. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give up one ball and, and you gotta have a short term memory. That's what I really had to learn. But I didn't have that. I didn't have that built in still right. in me. Right. So I'll right. give up one ball, whether whatever it was, and I'm you know, then another ball, another ball. Now I, I can't guard anything. So uh that whole spring I kind of just I had to mature when it comes to the, the game of DB and just learn the game and learn patience at the line of scrimmage and and, and learn that you give up a hitch, it's not the end of the world, mm-hmm. just things like that. So my spring season, I didn't play. We ended up, Juco, some of the teams didn't uh didn't have a season and a lot of like yeah. FBS schools in the big time didn't yeah. have a season. I remember, we yeah, ended up, I remember that, yeah. Our school ended up having a season. We had an 18 okay. season, we uh, – I mean, yeah, eight game season, and we went all the way to the national championship. Won the national championship, and uh, but I sat the bench the whole time. I never got in the game at DB. Right, I wasn't right. ready. I was getting told. I mean, I, I wouldn't play me either. I'm getting to- toasted every day in right. practice. You know, mm-hmm. what he could be what, potential and 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 realistic is two different things. So realistically, mm-hmm. I wasn't that good at DB, but I had the potential to be good. Yeah. So I didn't really play, and uh, I had a decision to make. Now I've been in JUCO almost three years. I, I have really no game film because I've only played in three games my sophomore year toward the PCL, hit COVID hit. So I had about three games of receiver film, and I'm telling all these D1 coaches that I want to play DB. But mm-hmm. I have no film at DB, not zero, zero film. Yeah. So uh, fortunately, Texas a and Kingsville, they took a chance on me. They're like, let me see what you can do. They took a chance on me at cornerback. I got there. Played my two seasons last season. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get all conference, and then just over these last two seasons, just really building uh, my game at the cornerback position. <sighs> man, man, you gave me a lot right there, boy. There's a lot we can get into, <laughs> man. I like that because you don't hear those stories too often, especially now. Like one of the things that I get from a lot of guys from a lot of my guys that are in college now, everybody wants to transfer. Okay. And you made me think of three things, and I had to write them down. You made me think of the word adversity, confidence, and work, okay? So I want you to touch on these three things. Like, what I heard, the first thing that stood out with, that, that you talked about is, one, you realize what the best position or what the hardest position to play is on the football field. You realize yeah. that. Uh-huh. Yes. I don't want to hear anything about – I don't want to hear nothing about no quarterback. 
None of that. Get your butt out there on that island and see and let's see if you can go yeah. to work. <laughs> but but adversity, man. Um how did it the adversity make you better? Because you said something significant there. You said, man, you went to a place in the middle of nowhere. Um, you didn't play. You had a position change. You went through a lot of adverse situations. It got you to Kingsville where they took a chance on. You talked about you lost your confidence for a little bit, man. You see that so many times where guys lose their confidence and how do you build it back up? How did the adversity mold you to, to who you are right now? And how did it help elevate you when you went to uh, a and Kingsville? I really feel like adversity helped me in the sense of like just my end, like just not giving up. Like when, right? Not everybody's the same, but if you if you got that willpower, like like relentless, like I got to be good at this, I got to be good at this. And then yeah. in my situation, I felt like shoot, I stacked all these cards against myself. Like I got to find a way to get out of it. I dug this hole. That's, no one that's told good. Me to move that's good, man. Oh, that's good. You're going. I'm sorry, man, but that's good, man. You 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 spitting facts right now. You going, man. So that's that's how I kind of looked at it. I'm like, no one, no one did this to me. I did this to yeah. myself. I chose to go to cornerback. I chose to come to the uh, Hutchinson, Kansas. All of these things was what Keon did. So yeah. Keon had to get himself out of it. So that's how yeah. I really looked at it. Like I didn't. I just refused to give up on myself. In in a sense, man, this 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 is beautiful because now you're talking about the self awareness too, man. And um, you know, now that you you realize, man, you. Well, it's not even that you realize, but you accepted it. You you accepted the fact that, hey, this is on me. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Now, to the kid or to the parent that might be listening to this, okay, and they're talking about, man, my son is in that situation. My son is, is, is dealing with that. Or that or that player is, damn, man, he's right. Like, dog, like, I, like I hear what he's saying. What would you say to that guy? Or, or if I'm that kid, I ask you, man, how did you get yourself out of it? Like, bro, like, if you know you dug this hole, how did you dig yourself back out? What would you tell them? I would say don't rush it. Don't rush okay. it. I was, I was, like I said, I got to Hudson, Kansas at 17 years old. I'm thinking I got to get in. I got to get in the NFL. Not next year. That's Maybe that's right, over. Right. That's but my coach sat me down. Coach Cook sat me down, I think, uh, my freshman year. Maybe maybe sophomore. I'm not sure exactly when it was. But he sat me down, man, and I, I was just frustrated because uh, I think it might have been the second and third game, right before I tore my PCL. I'm frustrated because I'm yeah. kind of rotating with guys, and I feel like I should be playing. I feel like I should be, should be getting the ball in my hands. Like, And uh, he was telling me, man, like, college football is not going nowhere. <laughs> the NFL yeah. is not going to go anywhere. Like, whether, yeah. you, whether you make it there tomorrow or two years from now, it is still going to be there. So I think uh, my answer would be just, just don't rush it, man. It, none of that's – the shoot they got nils now they got they got <laughs> yeah. anything you can imagine at, at that level the nfl is owns a day of the week they're not going anywhere yep. you know just don't don't ru rush the process man everything is 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 gonna happen for a reason so i think and that's what I, my advice would be just don't rush it man just just take your time to, to get better at your craft and uh everything will work out man this is good man i love it i love what you're saying man and, and you, you know you even got a faith component in there um, talking about praying through it and all that, man. And I completely resonate with that. Man, let's get to Kingsville. All right, so, man, you went through the stuff at, at JUCO. You get to Kingsville, man. They took, <laughs> they, they took a chance on you, dog. Now you at Kingsville, man. You in a new spot, man. You go from what, bro, what Kansas down all the way down there yeah. to Mexico. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. and how was that transition? And just what was that experience like playing in Kingsville? I loved it, man. I can't uh, – I really have no complaints about Kingsville, man. Great town, man. Great mm -hmm. people there. Great coaching staff. Great school. Mm -hmm. Wish we could have won some more games, but that's neither here <laughs> nor right. there. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Kingsville helped me out a lot as far as like growth. Uh, it was kind yeah. of my first time. Well, I had already been on my own, my own in Hutchinson, Kansas. But in JUCO, you're on your own, but you're not really on your own. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, you got everybody's yeah. in the same situation. These are all brothers at this point. You know what I mean? We're all in the same little dorm area we all got the same times once you get to your university it's kind of more more widespread you know you got off campus guys you got on campus guys you got guys to do this you got guys to do that yeah you know practice so it's a little bit more of a uh, like broader spectrum what you would that like you would expect from a two-year to a four-year so i think mm -hmm. i had to really transition in 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 uh managing my time like in juco you don't have no time yeah <laughs> At yeah. all, like here, here, here. We know you. Where, where did you go? <laughs> There's nowhere right. miles east or west to go. So, 
Right. And uh, at university, I had to really manage, learn how to manage my time and and, and really my off time. Do I want to do this or do I want to do that? Do I want to do this and do I want to do that? Right. So I think once I got the hang of just really, what's the word I would look for? Just like I said, managing time. Once I got the hang of just a real schedule, like an actual schedule, mm-hmm. a self schedule, not a schedule that a coach is going to give you. Da da da. I got to be here, but a self uh something that you have to tell yourself, like self-motivated yeah. types. So I think that yeah. really taught me that. But I never had, had to be on any of uh, like a self-schedule coming out of JUCO. And then right. uh, another thing I think Kingsville taught me was just, just – what's the word I want to look for? The love for the game. And I think my love for the game really grew in Kingsville, honestly. Okay. But I felt okay. like I kind of – I didn't really get that – you get high school, I play receiver, you get the Juco, kind of iffy and kind of janky kind of situation, hurt, injuries. But then I get the I get to Kingsville and I get to play. This is the first time that I get a full season at the right. collegiate level. You know, I'm getting I'm 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 on the field, you know, like I'm I'm on everything, kick off, kick with them, they're on everything. So I'm really getting the the full experience of, of college football. <laughs> so I think Kingsville, I'm thanking Kingsville for giving me the opportunity to just be on the field to play, to grow my game. Even too, even my first year at uh, Kingsville, I didn't even really barely play. I still had to learn. Like when I first got to the spring, I, I was locking a couple guys up and then I would do something and coach would be like, you know, like that, that was kind of, kind of, kind of rookie-ish. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like, like they said you didn't have much yeah. experience, but, but dang, Keon. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Like I'm talking about, uh, I remember one, one play uh, specifically, I think we was in like a quarters coverage or thing, like cover four or something like that. And uh, one, <laughs> if you, one goes under and quarters one goes under, you 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 got two. Mm-hmm. You know, you eyes on two, you fall off, whatever be the case. And I just kept messing that up, man. I'm talking about one ran a drag, and I'm hauling butt across the field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on yeah. a drag route right in, in, in quarters. Like just right. little things like that. Like I had no clue, but I'm in my mind. I'm like, man, I should be the number one corner in the nation, <laughs> you know. Right. But I can't run right. Yeah. quarters right, right. You know. So fortunately, Coach Moten, uh, Eddie Moten, shout out Coach Moten. He he worked with me, man. He never gave up with me. Just kept throwing me out there in the twos. Kept playing and and getting better. And then I think by by mid season that year, I was pretty much rotating with the starters. And then uh, last season, I kind of took over. As the starting mm-hmm. cornerback, and I, I balled out, and uh, I was able to earn all conference. And uh, I think last year was my not my breakout year, but my year of really just owning the DB game. When you when you when you play DB, yeah. you got to own that stuff, man. You yeah. can't be out there yeah. on your head and can I guard this guy? Oh, he's big. Oh, he's fat. You can't be on that, man, because you will. <laughs> it will be a touchdown. You will hit the band that, playing. That, that's that self belief, dog. Yep, that's big, man. I love it, and I love how you said that you you fell in love with the game again. And I think like like the journey that you went on, man, from from the, from South Carolina to Kansas to Texas, is yeah. going to show you one way or another. Like I either love this or I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I love how you how you spoke to that. Like man, for for the people that that uh, talk about the levels, right? Like Kingsville. Uh, remind me, Kingsville is what D two? Yeah, D two. D two. Yes. Okay. So oh, you see. know they talk about the D two level, the NAI level, hell, D three, whatever, right? And they speak to that man, and you had your opportunity to to play. What type of talent is there, man? Um, you know, because a lot of people underestimate that talent uh, at that level. How, what would you say, speaking to that? Um, I would say the talent. There is kind of a drop off. It's not much, but I think the biggest drop off is definitely in the trenches. Like if you, yeah, uh, a guy, yeah. a D two lineman, and, and a lineman from from. <laughs> Ohio State or something, probably gonna be two different lines. Yeah, honestly. two different lines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely yeah. probably gonna be two different. And if, if Ohio State lineman or, or whatever be the case is in a D2, you're gonna know because he's gonna stand out. But as far as the skill position, man, I don't I mean you probably do have those some guy, of course you got those freaks, you know, that, that are yeah. just clearly at that level. But as far mm-hmm. as when it comes to skilled, I don't really see much of a drop off. Like it, it it's kind of neck and neck. You got your fast guys, you got your big guys. Uh, you got your in between guys. You got guys mm-hmm. who can't catch field. Like I feel like at every level you have certain guys, but it's when it comes to skill. I think it's it may be some of a drop off, but not much. But definitely in the trenches, I think. Uh, shoot, I think my the the D line at Hutchinson I think was bigger than the D line at at Kingsville. Right. 
But I right. just got them guys a factory. But uh <laughs> And man, I, and I would have to agree with you, man, because you know, being able where we linked up at the Dream Bowl, man, being able to the coach in that, it reminded you, or reminded me of, man, there's there's dudes everywhere. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And, and being a guy that that played in the NFL and all that, and seeing you guys, I'm like, man, y'all y'all can play. You just need somebody to tell you that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I know it's hard sometimes, man, when you're at those lower levels, and you're like, man, can I really do this? Can a guy yeah. really get up out of this thing and, and get there? And you got the former players that that were there coaching, like, nah, man, y'all, yeah, y'all got it. Y'all just need the opportunity to be seen, man. So let, let's speak to that. So let's talk about how you, you know, you finished it last year. You felt like you came on. You felt like that was your breakout. You finally understood this DV position now, all right? Now, some say it might be too late. Some say, oh, man, you know, we late in the game. Man. It's my last year, all that stuff. How did the Dream Bowl come about? And what was your experience like at the Dream Bowl? Uh, the Dream, Dream Bowl came about uh, just because I was trying to get some more exposure. Yep. Um, I was trying to, I got invited. I was trying to just, just put myself out there more. Like things that, like I said, things that I didn't do in high school as far as marketing myself yeah. and and yeah. trying to, you know, like, shoot, ask grandma, she'll help me out. Or, or ask, you know, dad, he'll yeah. help me out type thing. Yeah. Uh, I tried to just eliminate those. Like I tried to make sure I did, I put myself out there because I refused to, to to fall behind because I didn't do something myself. It wasn't going to be on me this time. I feel like there was a yeah. lot of things happened because of me. So this time I'm I'm going to be at that dream boat. I don't care if I got to drive eight hours, 10 hours to get there. I'm going to be there, you know? Yep. yep. And that's going to be, that's what it's going to be. So uh, I got to the dream bowl and I like the dream. Dream bowl is probably the only, other than that North South bowl in high school. I've never been to any other uh, bowl games or yeah. any other, I guess, what do you want to call all star games or anything? So mm -hmm. I enjoyed it, man. I had a, a great time. It was a little bit cold, <laughs> but I thought, <laughs> yeah, the, man, yeah, yeah, y'all came the at the wrong time, good. man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought the food was good. I thought the ceremony was good. I thought everything was, was uh, a good, I, like I said, I never been to one, but from, from my right. understanding yeah. of what one is supposed to go like, I thought I had a great time, man. Yeah. <laughs> the game was fun, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we didn't win. You, you you know that <laughs> we didn't yeah, win, yeah but yeah yeah but <laughs> you probably no tears about it it was okay but uh the experiment overall I would recommend it to anybody I don't know yeah. about the the weather you have to bring you an extra joke jacket or something but yeah man yeah because yeah yeah y'all came y'all hey. y'all decided to have dream bowl in the worst week <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean but yeah man like the overall experience man like you know I wanted you to touch on that because you know you got some guys that say man is it worth it should I take the chance should I take the risk and I love how you said man I'm not gonna make the same mistake that I did before. And there's nothing like, man, when you get older, man, you know, I got two girls at home now. Uh, you know, I got done playing. There's so many times you look back on your career, it's like, man, if I could go back and do this all over again, I know yeah. what I would do now with this experience and watching the growth of of players. And, you know, maybe this is me being a dad. Maybe this is me being a coach. And you see it like, damn, I'm getting soft, man, because you love seeing the growth. You love watching the guys mature, man. And that's something I think a lot of people need to take uh, consideration of when they listen to this and hear where you started from in high school, all the experiences, the adversities, the ups and downs that you went through all get to the point where you get to the dream bowl, man. You're like, man, look, I'm taking advantage of all of this. You yeah. know what I mean? And then, like, for me being able to coach you guys, man, y'all, you know, you you said something in particular, man, and I want to give you some credit, too. You and the rest of the DBs I got a chance to coach, man. Y'all reminded me of how much fun it was. You know yeah. what I mean? And I, went, okay, I got back to my wife, man, and she was like, she, she, she was like, how was it? I said, man. I said, I should have never done this damn thing. I'm uh, like, I, I come home, I'm like, damn. <laughs> I was like, God, I love coaching these. You know what I'm saying? And it, yeah. it, brought the, it brought the joy back for me, too. You know what I mean? Because I'm watching guys that were hungry. I'm watching guys trying to get it. And I'm yeah. like, damn, I remember being like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think, you know, I got to credit you guys, and especially you, because what did I tell you all week? I said, I'm going to be on your ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, I ain't letting you get away with nothing. You. Uh, <laughs> but, but, man. Uh, now let's talk, you know, you know, you went through the Dream Bowl, man. You had some of the scouts there. I remember, like, the Ravens. I talked to them. Uh, the Chargers were there. All that good stuff. And you go through that journey now of, of all right, man, I finished college, man. I, I hit these college all-star games. Uh, I'm getting this exposure out. And now I'm trying to get into this program. How did that experience go, man? What was that like? What were the, what were the tension points in, in that? And, and how did that lead you uh, to the arena game? Um, I think it was a, it was a little bit difficult for me. Not difficult, but just uh, I was in back to that place of like like of uh, uncertainty. I I didn't really know what was gonna happen. 
didn't know if I was gonna get picked up. If I didn't was gonna get picked up. I'm like, man, I don't I don't know if uh if you don't get picked up, what happens next? You know, like yeah, is, is yeah. there a waiting period? Is do I am I just working every day on my craft on standby? Like I, I didn't really know. So uh I got with my coach, Coach Moten, and we just trained every day, man, for my uh I was fortunate enough to have a pro day. Mm -hmm. And uh I get to my pro day, man, but I just I think that's another thing with the drop offs. I feel like uh and this is no diss to, to D2 or anything like that, but uh yeah. I feel like the 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 environment could have been a better situation. Like we had guys yeah. show up for our pro day that that woke up at 3 a.m., drove eight hours, you know, and now they gotta run a 40 outdoors. Right. It's about 40 degrees outside with the wind blowing. Right. You're not gonna get yeah. no act numbers for real. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? They and they're definitely right. not gonna translate to some some kid that did his in 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 big dome inside. Right. No wind, perfect not perfect fresh, conditions, all that. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. they be a good spaghetti dinner, you know what I mean? Like just the <laughs> right, situation. Yeah. You know, I think uh just the environment. So no excuses, but uh I didn't perform how I know I needed to perform. Come uh, small uh small skill small school dude, you know, cornerback. I know they wanted to see me run fast. <clears throat> so I didn't meet the times that I really wanted to meet. But uh I don't think that's the end of the world for me. I, I was fortunate enough to uh, I was already in talks with uh Coach Thomas gonna par par possibly get into the uh, arena league, but I was still trying okay. to like not push him off. But I was like, I still wanted, I wanted to take my chance with the pro day. Yeah, you know, I didn't really, uh, yeah. I didn't want to not go to a pro day and just hop in the in the a arena league and uh right. and burn the opportunity out there. But uh, looking back on it, <laughs> I just wish I would have uh, prepared uh better for my pro day. I feel like shoot, we we got there. Me, I did it the the smart way. I feel like me and a couple of the homies went in a hotel hotel room, showed up the night before. <laughs> right. But I just wish I would have like what's the word I'm looking for? I wish I would have got there two days sooner, if that makes sense. Like really yeah. settled in, got my mind right on on what this on what this this opportunity holds for me. I don't think I understood the magnitude of what these numbers are gonna yeah. be. They're gonna see yeah. four seven and be like, no. You know, right, right. They don't not, even, not even, not even, not even look at the tape. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't care if you can ball. They don't care if you ran against the wind. Uh, uh, they, you know what I mean. Like they don't, they don't know all those things. They just see four seven right. and, and like, uh, like my shuttles. I was clocking in the five ten five with, with Coach Moten. Whole time we were training, I was clocking four point oh's, four ones, like crazy. Uh, not crazy times, but good times, especially for a longer corner. Great times in right. my five ten five. Right. Man, I get to the pro day and I run like a on that five ten five like a four point six or something like just like a whole half a second. I'm like, man, there's that's like that's the difference between corner and O line. Yeah, like someone's mm -hmm. gonna see that number and think, uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I know exactly what you're saying. I got I didn't really know understand the magnitude of those numbers and uh, looking back on it, I wish I would have prepared better myself. But uh, you can't go back and change it now. All I can do now is just make plays. And if I get an opportunity to, to test again, just test better. Right. Yep. And so now but, you're uh, in the you're you're in the arena game now. And so what's that experience like, man? I know that you know you talked about it being a different game, but you're still a pro now. You're getting a paycheck. You're getting a, you, you're getting an opportunity to live your dream. It may not be exactly what you want right now, but you're living it. What's the arena game like? Uh. Green game's fun, man. I think uh, if you can ball, you're okay. going to ball in this league. Okay. If you can ball, you're going to ball, man. And, and I think uh, playing DB in this league is – is I feel like you play DB in this league. I know the field is shrunken and smaller, so, I mean, I, there might be some critters out there and think, oh, well, outdoor you might not be able to run long 60 yeah. yards or whatever be the case, man. But outdoor football, you don't have a guy – coming at you full speed as soon as they say hut from yeah. 25 yards back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got time. Yeah. You can sit on something in, in an outdoor game. You sit on something here. Good luck. You better have some right. pattern control, some type of back pedal <clears throat> uh, to, to do that. And for me, I never see, so like I said, uh, to backtrack, so I played DB coming into Kingsville with well, our technique, we didn't really backpedal a whole lot. Coach Moten, he ain't really with the backpedal. He wants you to challenge. He wants the challenge phase. He wants you to the 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 he well the backpedal to the, the, the challenge it, but he don't want you just just getting out of there like he like he's scared mm -hmm. of the deep. Um, he wants you to about eight, you know, slow read it, quick game, mm -hmm. get you read quarterback, all of that. So that's what I was used to. All right, now you 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 slow read that high motion, man. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah, luck. Yeah. Was really quick. So uh, right. I think that's where I just had to adjust that. Uh, but fortunately, we got a pretty good high motion man here. So I haven't really had to do a whole lot of high motion. Just kind of mm -hmm. stay there with the corner and everything. But uh, <clears throat> as far as the, the game itself, I think it's just a quicker version of outdoor football. Like you, if you make mistakes, it's going to show, especially at the DB position. The DB, I feel like it's, it's yeah. the hardest position to cover up mistakes if that makes sense i don't yeah. know if i said that the oh right yeah way. no it, you make no, you, yeah yep yeah. you saying it the right way know. everybody's touchdown big dog <laughs> that's what yeah. it is everybody <laughs> sees your mistake you know what i mean everybody so let me so let me ask you this man as we as we wrap up um and as we close man it's been good man um you kind of you taking me back to the to the dream ball i'm like damn man like you give me some juice again you know what i mean uh what is your goal man i you know when we look at at the end game for you when we just talk about the game of football, right? Just specifically in that. What what's the goal for you? What are you trying to accomplish in this game? I want to get to the top. Yeah. That's what I want to do. I feel like I got everything that they want at the top. I feel like I got length, I got speed, I got I got everything that I got ball skills, good hips. Like I feel like I got everything physically that they want. <clears throat> Mentally mm -hmm. I gotta get myself there to like, all right. Once I feel like I haven't gotten there yet, but once I get there, what are you going to do to stay there? You yeah, know, I feel like I am going to get there eventually if I just do everything in my power, control what I control, and just continue to make plays. Like right now, I got um, I got six interceptions on tape, but really four officially because it seemed like every time Keon get an interception, they get called back. So uh, <laughs> that's what we do with. But I feel yeah. like I'm doing my thing a little bit um in this league, so I know I'm, I'm probably going to get another opportunity somewhere. Yeah. But uh, right now, I'm just trying to control what I control, make plays uh, in this league. Uh, we're going to go to playoffs. So uh, I think July 6th would be our first game. And they're going to – they. I don't know if I'm in trouble for saying this, but they are – we are going to uh, – they're going to air it out on national live television. Uh, okay. All the yes, sir. Games. So uh, everything will be on CBS Sports. And uh, our first game will be July 6th, first round of playoffs. So uh, I'm just looking to make an impact in that game and, and take yeah. our team, you know, higher – and if shoot, if shoot, we can get to the uh, the arena bowl and shoot winning, I think that'll do magnitude uh, great things for me. You know, uh, as far as like outside of football, shoot inside of yeah. football. You know? Yeah. So love it, man. That's just where, where I'm at. If the season we don't go too far in the season, uh, I'm trying to this summer and uh, over the off season, I'm trying to get into these uh, UFL workouts and just yeah, saw what I've done in the AFL. And that's gonna be my next question, so, man. Yeah. Mm hmm. So that's where my my main focus is, and uh, just trying to finish this season out strong, and then get into some UFL workouts. Try to get on a UFL roster, and, and just keep working my way up the ranks. Love it, love it, man. Well, shoot, let's close it out with this. Uh, if you had to say one thing to anybody who's listening, to a parent, to a to a to a player, to a whatever, and you know, if y'all don't remember anything that I said today, <laughs> I need you to remember this. What would you tell the people? Don't give up. Do not give up on yourself, man. I think uh, anytime anybody asks me a question like that, I feel like I have the same answer, man. But I can't. Yeah, I, I'm sticking to my roots on that, man. I just yeah. don't give up yeah. on yourself, man. I feel like once you give up on yourself, any, anybody can believe in you. Mom, dad, auntie, anybody can believe in you as much <laughs> as they want to, man. But if you don't believe in yourself, it's only folks so far you're going to get, man. You just don't yeah. give up on yourself. I don't care how hard it gets. I don't care if you're getting bombed every day in practice. I've been there. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> if, if 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 coach didn't cuss you out uh all day uh long because you can't cover nothing, sorry this, sorry that. Been there, man. Do not give up on yourself. Like once you give up on yourself, man, you you, you don't cut your light switch off. You, you keep that light yeah. switch on, man. Always keep the light switch on. Think positive, and 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 just go from there, man. If you if you never give up on yourself, man, can't nobody stop you. I feel like keep that man, wheel. This is good, bro. Look, I appreciate your time, man. I know that you're busy. I know you got practice going on. This is good, man. You gave me life again. I got to stop talking to you, dog. Uh, this was good. But look, man, this is another episode of the Player Circle, man. I told you where we got – we get former players, guys that have been through the program or been associated with the program that educate you on their experience so you can either elevate and not make this and, – and not make the same mistakes that they did. Man, I appreciate you. Make sure you guys go to pptlead.com if you want to learn more about the program. Uh, Keon, where can they follow you at, man? You can follow me on Instagram at Keonski, K-E-O-N-S-K-I. And then I'm also on Twitter at Keon with two N's. 
Well, I probably need to change it because that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you probably need to look at that too, too complicated. I was like, yeah, yeah, see, see, thank you. Y'all are uh, with, them, with them stupid uh, names, man. And I'm like, just put your name in there. Dang. Make sure you can uh, pronounce your, 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 your Twitter hashtag. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, no, we're going to give me your Twitter. Get him your Twitter, uh, man. <laughs> Well, uh, I think uh, my username on there is you know, with two N's and, uh, and like a four and two X's or something. But for See, the most yeah, part, on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, follow him on Instagram. Now, he only knows on Twitter. But look, man, I appreciate it, man. Make sure y'all like and subscribe and y'all uh, stay tuned for all the other uh, episodes that we have. And shoot, we out.